Welcome to the Desert Ridge Baptist Church communion service on this Good Friday. I want us to just take a few moments together this evening and, and think about what Christ has done for us. Certainly, all of the gospel events, his death, his burial, and his resurrection, and his life as he ever intercedes for his people, uh, must be understood together and are, are all together a part of the good news. But we think today specifically about how he bore the penalty for our sins. And we think specifically of the cross. And so I invite you to do so as we have scripture reading this evening, as we sing uh, songs uh, about the cross and about his sacrifice. And as we remember and as the Bible says, proclaim, we proclaim the Lord's death uh, in our participation in the Lord's Supper together. So welcome and may the Lord be glorified. Colin. Would you bow your heads with me as we open in prayer? Holy God, thank you for today. God, thank you for the opportunity to gather with your people. Um, God, in such a special memorial. God, as we consider um, the victory that was won at the cross. God, as we look forward to, with eager anticipation, Easter. God, I pray that you would bless this time as we come to your table tonight. Uh, God, I pray this would be a sweet time of fellowship, God, and that as your word is read and as hymns are sung in worship to you, God, you would uh, use that in our hearts, God, that you would stir our affections for you, and that would help us to fix our eyes upon Jesus. It's in your son's precious and holy name we pray. Amen. I'm going to be reading from 1 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians, excuse me, chapter 5, starting in verse 11. And if you would stand for the reading of God's word, please. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, starting in verse 11. Therefore, knowing the fear of the Lord, we persuade others. But what we are is known to God, and I hope it is known to you also, and known also to your conscience. We are not commending ourselves to you again, but giving you cause to boast about us, so that you may be able to answer those who boast about outward appearance and not about what is in the heart. For if we are beside ourselves, it is for God. If we are in our right mind, it is for you. For the love of Christ controls us, because we have concluded this, that one has died for all, therefore all have died. And he died for all, that those who live might no longer live for themselves, but for him who for their sake died and was raised. From now on, therefore we regard no one according to the flesh, even though we once regarded Christ according to the flesh, we regard him thus no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. All this is from God, through, who, through Christ reconciled to us himself and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, in Christ, God was reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against them and entrusting to us the message of reconciliation. Therefore, we are ambassadors for Christ, God making his appeal through us. We implore you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake he made him to be sin, who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. May the Lord add his blessing to the reading of his word. Amen. Mm, great news that he took our sins. Let us stand and sing as we sing, There's the Fountain.
its power till all the ransomed church of God me safe to sin no more me safe to sin no more me safe to sin no more till all the ransomed church of God me safe to sin no more to read from the book of Luke, Luke chapter 23, beginning with verse 33. And I want to read Luke's account of the gospel events before we come to the table. Luke chapter 23, verse 33, through chapter 24 and verse 9. These are the historical events that accomplish the salvation of God's people, the death, burial, and resurrection. And as we have heard from Paul's second letter to the Corinthians, uh, so that we understand, uh, we, in, we can interpret the meaning of these things, and that it is that the benefits of these events that took place in real time and space history, when applied to a sinner, bring about reconciliation with God redemption from sin and make us fit for glory they provide the basis for Jesus intercessory work so that as he stands in the presence of God as a matter of fact he has sat down having done all this work and his presence there at the throne of God makes it possible for our presence there around the throne of God and we celebrate that but these are the events according to Luke so let's read Luke chapter 23, beginning in verse 33. And when they came to the place that is called the skull, there they crucified him and the criminals, one on his right and one on his left. And Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And they cast lots to divide his garments. And the people stood by watching but the rulers scoffed at him, saying, He saved others, let him save himself. If he is the Christ of God, his chosen one. The soldiers also mocked him, coming up and offering him sour wine, and saying, If you're the king of the Jews, save yourself. There was also an inscription over him, This is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals who were hanged railed at him, saying, are you not the Christ? Save yourself and us. But the other rebuked him, saying, Do you not fear God, since you are under the same sentence of condemnation? And we indeed justly, for we are receiving the due reward of our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. And he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And he said to him, Truly I say to you, Today you will be with me in paradise. It was now about the sixth hour, and there was darkness over the whole land until the ninth hour, while the sun's light failed, and the curtain of the temple was torn in two. Then Jesus, calling out with a loud voice, said, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. And having said this, he breathed his last. 
Now when the centurion saw what had taken place, he praised God, saying, Certainly this man was innocent. And all the crowds that assembled for this spec spectacle, when they saw what had taken place, returned home, beating their breasts. And all his acquaintances and the women who had followed him from Galilee stood at a distance, watching these things. Now there was a man named Joseph from the Jewish town of Arimathea. He was a member of the council, a good and righteous man who had not consented to their decision and action. And he was looking for the kingdom of God. This man went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then he took it down and wrapped it in a linen shroud and laid him in a tomb cut in stone where no one had ever yet been laid. It was the day of preparation and the Sabbath was beginning. The women who had come with him from Galilee followed and saw the tomb and how his body was laid. Then they returned and prepared spices and ointments. On the Sabbath, they rested according to the commandment. But on the first day of the week, at early dawn, they went to the tomb taking the spices they had prepared. And they found the stone rolled away from the tomb. But when they went in, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. While they were perplexed about this, behold, two men stood by them in dazzling apparel. And as they were frightened and bowed their faces to the ground, the men said to them, Why do you seek the living among the dead? He is not here, but has risen. Remember how he told you, while he was still in Galilee, that the Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men, and be crucified, and on the third day rise. And they remembered his words. And returning from the tomb, they told all these things to the eleven, and to all the rest." This, this is the detailed account that Luke gives us of what Paul summarized in 1 Corinthians 15, 3 and 4 when he summarized the gospel and said that Jesus died for our sins according to the scriptures and that he was buried and that he rose the third day. The good news can be summarized in those events because it is these events that provide for our salvation. In Mark's gospel, he quotes the rulers scoffing at him, saying, He saved others, he cannot save himself. And I want you to reflect upon how true their statement was. Of course, they did not mean it in the sense that Jesus was accomplishing right in front of them. But because he was saving others, he indeed could not save himself. If he had saved himself in that moment, then we would be unsaved. But he saved others, and so he could not save himself. And he bore the wrath of God. In Isaiah 53, I want to invite you to reflect on the the verse that says we considered him afflicted and smitten by God we esteemed him not indeed those who crucified him those Jewish religious leaders they counted him as cursed because he was hanging on that tree they counted him as smitten by God and afflicted and indeed they were right but it was not for his own transgressions that he bore the rod of God's wrath, but it was for our transgressions. And so that, that phrase from 1 Corinthians 15, Christ died for our sins, needs to, needs to stay with us. We need to reflect on that. The, the idea of substitution the idea of vicarious sacrifice, which is present throughout the Old Testament sacrificial system. That system was not put in place so that those adherents could go and accumulate for themselves the merit of participating in a religious ritual. But it was to preach the gospel to them. And it was to proclaim to them the need of a substitutionary, vicarious, penal sacrifice so that sins could be paid for and sinners could be forgiven. 
Our God is both just and the justifier of the one who has faith in Jesus, according to Romans 3. And that is because the sin debt has been paid for his people. I'd like for us to take just a moment to reflect on these things. Um, thinking of, of Christ as our substitute. Thinking of the just wrath of God that we deserve and our sinfulness, but that he took for us. And then we will proceed. So take just a moment and prayerfully consider our Lord and his work on the cross. Thank you, Lord, for such a powerful and perfect plan of salvation. Help us to live for your glory because of what you've done for us. And now as we enter into this time of communion that we get to enjoy, invited to the Lord's table. Lord, we know that it's because you have made us right before you. You have welcomed us because our sins and transgressions and iniquities have not been imputed to us, but rather have been imputed to our Savior. And he bore them, and it is finished. We thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, men, if you would come forward to help with the distribution of the elements. First Corinthians chapter eleven, verses twenty three and twenty four. Paul wrote. For I received from the Lord what I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Joe, would you lead us in prayer? Lord God, we come to you humbly this evening, Father, and, and acknowledge you as our, our creator our sustainer and of all things Lord because of what you have done Lord we can be born again you have changed us you have you have done a supernatural work in us a spiritual work in us and even called us the, the, the temple of the Holy Spirit Lord um, that is your gift to us we thank you Lord that we're able to partake in the remembrance of of your sacrifice Lord the breaking of this bread as your body was broken for us, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for, for causing us and helping us to be living sacrifices for you, Lord. As you are our sacrifice, Father, we can be living sacrifices for you in this world and to accomplish what you have, have commanded us to accomplish, Father, those things that you have put before us, those works that you have set before us, Lord God. And as we partake in this breaking of the bread, Father, and this partaking of the bread, Lord, we pray that you would be glorified because of your brokenness, Lord. We live, we have salvation. And we just thank you and praise you in Jesus' precious name. Amen.
John 6, 35, Jesus said, I am the bread of life. In verses 57 and 58, he said, As the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so whoever feeds on me, he also will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven, not like the bread the fathers ate and died. Whoever feeds on this bread will live forever. Thank you, Lord. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, continuing with verse 25. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Roger, would you lead us now? Could you join me in prayer, please? On this Good Friday, we thank you, Lord Jesus, for being willing to shed your blood and to take the full wrath of God for our sins, for our salvation, and for your glory. We worship and praise you, Jesus, for being the ultimate model of loving one another. We pray this in your name, Lord Jesus, and help us to do likewise. Amen.
Hebrews 9.22 tells us that apart from the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. 1 John 1.7 tells us that if we walk in the light as He is the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, His Son, cleanses us from all sin. As we have remember the Lord's death let us remember that in Luke 22 in verse 15 when the Lord instituted this this ordinance we find and he said to them I have earnestly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer for I tell you I will not eat it until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God so let us let us consider his death appropriately and soberly. But let us remember that Sunday's coming. And the, the historical reality is that Jesus ever lives to make intercession for us. And that he is planning to celebrate at the consummation of his kingdom in the future and from the very beginning, that was part of his plan and the gospel events. So let us, let us have joy in the power of our Lord to defeat, not only to die, but to defeat death on our behalf. JP, would you now close the time of our communion with prayer? Let us pray. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we come before you. We thank you for this time that we've had to commune with you. And we just ask, Father, that you would be with us until Sunday when we can get together again and just praise your name for the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Be with us as we go our separate ways this evening. Help us to look to you for the guidance that we need and give us the strength to tell others what you have done for us. This we ask in Jesus' precious and holy name. Amen. That first Lord's Supper, the Last Supper as it's called, they ended by singing. And so we will also sing let us stand and this will be our benediction this evening well. the song be still my soul is a hymn that has been with the church for a long time and uh, I would like to end on the final verse if we could advance to the final verse and that's it that should be it and we'll sing it a cappella be still, my soul, the hour is hasting on, when we shall be forever with the Lord. When this appointment, grief and fear are gone, purest joys restored. Be still my soul when change and tears are past. All safe and blessed shall me at last. Amen.